England, the overwhelming majority of people working in early years education are female. Men make up just 2% of the workforce, despite a moderate government target of at least 6%. Why are there so few men working with this age range? And what, if anything, can be done to encourage more men to enter the profession? Bosland Green Primary School is in Bradley Stoke on the outskirts of Bristol. Paul Thurston has been the reception teacher for the past five years. Fred, wake up. Oh, he's rubbing his eyes. Oh, he's stretching. Come on, Fred. Come and teach us some sounds. Fred, are you ready? What? Oh, Fred thinks these words are going to be really hard today. Do you not think they're going to be hard? I chose early years because that's the age range that I was really interested in. I was very determined in what I wanted to do, and I really wasn't going to let people change my mind. So, although I was, you know, one of the only blokes, male people, on my course, it hasn't put me off. I'll do it first, and then you can copy me. So we're going to start at his head, and we're going to go down his body. And then we're going to go on his tail, and down his other leg. Kangaroo. I think that it's a difficult profession to get into, especially for early years, for males. Um, I think that society sees men working with young children as maybe not the done deal. Uh, I'm going to choose who gives me the next number. Afra, one, two... Who's got the number three? Research shows that men perceive working in the early years in the children's workforce as less prestigious. There are fewer career opportunities. There is a very much more vague career structure. The pension system doesn't support their future opportunities. Um, there is less in-service training than they would like. So it's seen as a far less professional area of work. Is the number three missing? Yeah. No! And I think one of the main aims of the early years education and care is to um, develop young children who are able to communicate and socialise in, with a whole diverse range of different people, not just with women. And if they're not having that experience in their early years, that's going to um, cause barriers for them perhaps in later life. To encourage more men into early years, I think that when teachers are doing their teaching practice, Everyone should have experience of early years. And that's not just men, that's all teachers should have experience of early years because a lot of teachers have no idea about how early years works. And I think that if they did, it might put some of them off, but it might encourage more to actually become part of it. I'm going to stick it on with glue. I'm going to watch you doing that because I'm interested. To get you doing jumping, I'd like to show other people how to do your jumping. Well, Mr Thurston's very, very popular both with, with boys and with girls. Um, he catches their attention. I think it's different for them to have a, a, a male teacher or a male role model, and um, they respond a lot to that. You know, it reflects society today that um, we've got male teachers and, and, and women teachers, so it's good. Compared to many other early years settings, Filton Avenue Nursery School in Bristol is quite exceptional. On the staff team, there is not only a male nursery teacher, but a male nursery nurse and a male support worker. Well, I think for us here, what we're trying to do with our staff team is to make it more reflective of our local community. So it's important that we have men working here in, in, in all sorts of roles within the school. Finley's collecting some in his scoop. Where's that going, Finley? Josh, you could stand down here, look. Often, if you work in a primary school, early years can be seen as the poor relation and have, have lower status. But hopefully now, with, with the expansion in early years provision and with the development of children's centres, um, the profile of early years is being raised and hopefully that will attract more men in. What's your idea? Oh, he's, what's he doing? Clapping. He's clapping. You ready? Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just 
like me. I chose to go into teaching when my first daughter was born and I just realised how important it was, um, the development of children uh, from, a, from naught to five. So I chose to do early years um, and I've stayed in early years uh, since I trained. If you've got an idea, put your hand up. Me. I was um, in the record industry. <laughs> So I was looking after customers, I was jetting all over the world, um, making sure they got their CDs, which was a new industry at the time, fairly new, 14 years ago. Um, and I just thought I want to do something where I can give something back. There's some evidence that men choose to enter the children's workforce later in life, after they've pursued another career. Um, and I think we need to look at what are the barriers to that happening because that, that could be a marvellous resource to the children's workforce. Men um, could, could um, bring a, a wonderful experience of the world of work and a confidence about who they are and what they do. You see what Faria's done? She's got all these bricks that are the same shape, the long rectangles, and she's made a pile of them. Ooh, it's a bit wobbly, Faria. I think a lot of men feel that the pay is a barrier, and I... I remember when I was training, uh, speaking to a parent once, who said, oh, as you work up the school, do you get more money? You know, and it, it, it's seen as, it's perhaps later years and secondary, is seen as more important. Um, but uh, it, it really isn't. And I've been in nursery for 14 years, and I want to stay here. It's my specialism. And um, I'm getting paid as much as a, a, a head of a department in a secondary school would get paid. So what have we got? Monkeys eat bananas. Monkeys eat bananas. Gavin Trump has worked as a teacher with all the primary age rangers. He is currently working as a nursery nurse. Me, me, me. Callum, where have you been playing? I've been doing it for 20 years and I can't think of any practical reasons why it's a better career for women than men. There's no, there's no logical reason why more men don't do it. Yeah, I've often been the only man in the school that I've worked at. Uh, not, all, not, not every school. Um, but I've known that all my working life. That's just the environment that I work in. I mean, staff rooms are, are pretty feminine <laughs> sorts of places, and you do have to get used to, I don't know, I don't want to up. <laughs> um, lots of conversation about diet and soap operas and things that maybe I, I wouldn't, I've learned to, to talk about such things even though it's not something that I would necessarily initiate in a conversation. I can hear you. There. Are you going to hide in the triangle? You can hide in the triangle. There's a real stereotypical view that um, men don't do caring. And now with the Every Child Matters agenda, I think there's a, we're looking at the whole child and we're, we're looking at the caring side as well as the education side, right up to the age of 18. So that includes all teachers. And, and um, I, th I, I think for men, you know, men who don't care, I think they're missing something out. Oh. You know, it's, it's not that they're lacking something. I think, I think if, if men feel that they, they, they can't care as, as, as well as teach, then, then, then that, that's a problem. That one there, and that one there. The only negative experience I've had are issues around child protection. Um, so if you're working for a setting that has systems built in place, for instance, about changing children or children that need help toileting, um, I did work at a setting once where I wasn't allowed to take the children to the toilet. And, and of course, the other side of the coin of that is that it's discrimination against me. Um, but the way the systems here are, are such that, that no children would ever be alone with one adult. So, so it's just not, it doesn't matter what your gender is. When I'm having to deal with certain situations, I'm very careful. I'm always very aware that I have to tell someone. So, if, for example, if a child has wet themselves or had an accident in that way and it's only me, then I make sure that I've told someone that, that that's where I'm going to go. I'm quite fortunate that the children we've had so far are quite capable of dealing with most things themselves. So I'm, I'm around to help them and I will go into the toilets with them, but I won't go into the cubicles with them. And I'll make sure that I pass the clothes to them and I give them bags to put things in. So 
I'm quite fortunate that the children I've worked with have been able to deal with things themselves. Right, come on, Smiler. I want to be able to draw a smiley face in your hand today. Some children get very emotional in the morning, and although I find it difficult at times, they need hugs. Children of this age need someone to give them that support. Um, I do it in front of people, I never do it secretly, because I don't want, to people, I don't want the children going home and saying things that can be misconstrued. So I'm always very open, I'm always very aware of who else is around, and I'm very aware of where I am when things are happening. Because I don't, that would be my worst nightmare, would be that the children took something home in all innocence and the parents misconstrued what was going on. But again, the parents I've worked with have been fantastic and they've seemed to appreciate having a male in early years. I think it's really important that we do have, have men working in early years because I know that a lot of our families, um, they don't have their dads around at home um, and, and there aren't maybe positive role models in their lives. I think it's really important for boys that they see men reading books, that they see men writing um, and, and that those are cool, OK things to do. I think where we know that across the country we have problems with boys' achievement. One way is to encourage men into the children's workforce, as teachers particularly, because boys um, are then able to see that men value education. I have to say that um, one of the best things about being a primary school teacher is that you do get to work in all, lots of different areas. I get to do painting, I get to do cooking, I've done sewing, so actually I think I'm a role model that boys don't have to do just football and just sport and actually they can do whatever they want to do and I think that the fact that they see me making a fool of myself in drama and in dance and in PE means that the boys and the girls see that it's okay to have fun and to do your learning through fun. There's some wool. Sometimes people get confused that we want men in the early years workforce because we want men to rush around making aeroplane noises and pretending to, you know, play with, you know, trains and fighting games and all those things. Men, as we know, come in all different kinds of ways and you get very feminine men and you get much more masculine, as you do with women. It's actually, um, I think, more interesting, the kind of skills the kind of knowledge and understanding and skills that actually men bring to the workforce, that they bring into early years. And what is that? What part of the house is that? We need to move to a position where male participation in education and childcare in the children's workforce is the norm rather than the exception, and I'm afraid that's how it is at the moment. We need to move to a position where teaching and childcare and the, and the related childcare professions children's professions are seen as noble and at the moment we don't have that. I think that the fact that the society feels that men shouldn't work with young children, I think we should. I think we should have more men. I think men should be brave enough to say actually this is where I want to work and go for it.